All right, so this is another episode of Record Talk with Chris. Uh, today we're going to do some ranking the albums. We're going to be doing the four studio albums of a pioneering alternative country band called Uncle Tupelo. Um, so if you don't know Uncle Tupelo, um, they put out four albums from 1990 to 1993. Um, so they were a band that were based out of Belleville, Illinois, which is... Uh, uh, essentially in the uh, St. Louis area, kind of across the, uh, the river um, in Illinois. Um, and so the main two members of Uncle Tupelo were Jeff Tweedy and Jay Farrar. Uh, both are probably better known, uh, particularly Jeff Tweedy um, is now the leader of Wilco. Um, and Jay Farrar had a band named Sunvolt. Um, after they broke up in 1993, Uncle Tupelo has uh, never reunited. Um, so, um, and so they're they're kind of um, they had sort of they were influenced by punk, alternative of the 80s, but they were also influenced by country music, roots rock, um, whatever terminology you want to use. Um, for this sort of music. Some people kind of credit them as being sort of the uh, founders of the whole idea of alternative country. They're the first alternative country band. They themselves kind of downplay that themselves. Um, so let's get into the uh, four records um, that we're going to rank. And so... Um, my number four is Uncle Tupelo, No Depression. Um, this was their debut album, uh, which came out in 1990. Um, so it came out, um, they got a positive review in College Media Journal, CMJ. Um, ended up signing with Rockville Records. There ended up being some controversy with them later on. They eventually got their first three albums back. Um, and so, um, my, my sense of the album, No Depression, is that it, it's a good start. Um, I don't think they were, they were fully, um, formed, um, fully had reached their, um, their heights yet with this particular album. Um, but, um, so No Depression, um, that they ended I think there was a, a magazine about this style of music that got actually named after um, that title song, No Depression, Whiskey Bottle. Um, so um, there's going to be songs in, involving whiskey and drinking, Graveyard Shift. Um, but even though this is an album I've probably had for at least 20 years, it's not one I actually go back to very often. Um, my next album is going to be at the opposite end of their uh, catalog. Um, so this is their final album, Uncle Tupelo Anodyne, uh, which came out in 1993. Uh, this is when uh, they had actually signed with Sire Records. Um, this was their only... You know, release on Sire Records. Besides, I think they did a they did a comp of them. Um, there was a split in songwriting credits between Farrar and Tweedy, and I think um, I think sort of um, we could see the cracks sort of forming in the band. And obviously, shortly after um, they made this album, they did break up. Um, Tweedy and I think most I think everyone else in the band uh, followed him. Uh, to Wilco, and then Farrar started Sunvolt. Um, and I think most people, uh, if you find most lists online, they're probably ranking this higher than their number three. I think maybe the more standard choice is that this is their best or maybe their second best. Um, and so um, I think it was, it was the last of their albums I ever got. So sometimes I find that with... Um, bands is that a band that I really like, maybe what's the first or second album I heard from them is kind of the one I kind of imprint on. This just isn't it uh, for Uncle Tupelo. Um, but again, uh, there's not really any anything bad 
in their catalog. Um, so my number two is going to be their second album from 1991, which is called Still Feel Gone. And I found that this was probably the least country, most rock sounding of uh, their catalog. Um, Pitchfork uh, described it as so much stronger than uh, Uncle Tupelo's uh, debut, No Depression. Uh, I guess I'm agreeing with Pitchfork on this particular one. Uh, we still had the original drummer Mike Hydorn in the band along with uh, uh, Jeff Tweedy and Jay Farrar. Um, and Hydorn uh, was gone by, by the time the final couple albums came out, at least the final album for sure. Um, and then I'm just I'm just looking at the Wikipedia. So Rolling Stone gave it four stars in 1991, but somehow only gave it two stars in 2003. Um, but uh, you can probably take that for what it's worth, uh, which isn't very much. Um, there um, to kind of show their punk roots, there is a song that's a tribute to. Uh, D Boone from the uh, Minutemen, which is called D Boone. Uh, we've got a song called Gun. We've got a song called Punch Drunk. Um, so you, you can kind of see um, that going on. But my all time favorite album by Uncle Tupelo was their third album, uh, March 16 to 20, 1992, which, as that name would indicate, was of course uh, recorded on uh, those dates in March, um, actually released in August of 1992. It's almost entirely acoustic recording. Uh, it's a mix of original songs and some traditional folk songs, about half and half. Uh, Peter Buck from REM uh, was the producer uh, of this particular album. The uh, story was that um, Peter Buck had attended an Uncle Tupelo concert at the 40 Watt Club in Athens, Georgia, and um, Great Atomic Power. Um, they, um, uh, Atomic Power is um, a song, uh, a traditional song, and um, Peter Buck really liked it. And so uh, Coal Miners, uh, a traditional song, Satan, Your Kingdom Must Come Down, Moonshiner. I think um, I honestly probably really like their versions of sort of those traditional folk songs the most. Uh, obviously, some of their songs are good as well. Uh, Grindstone, uh, what Jay Farrar song, um, and um, Sandusky, uh, what both Jay and Jeff getting credit for, um, but um, I think this is, Rolling Stone gave it three stars, but Rolling Stone's crazy. Um, so uh, this is my favorite from the Uncle Tupelo catalog. Um, and then um, I'll be honest, I don't own enough of either of the, of the, the bands that uh, um, Uncle Tupelo broke up to be. I own a couple of Wilco albums. I have um, their, their, their famous one, of course, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot. Uh, I have their debut as well. I think I have one Sunfold, but um, I probably won't be doing a ranking of albums of those, either of those bands anytime in the near future just because I don't have nearly enough material. Particularly Wilco, there's just tons of albums that um, I don't have. So, again, just to kind of recap, um, my number four was 1990's No Depression, their debut. My number three was Uncle Tupelo's final album, Anodyne. Number two was 1991's Still Feel Gone. And Chris from wreck talk his favorite. If you, my recommendation, if you're going to get one and only one Uncle Tupelo album, I would get the March... 1992 album, which came out, of course, in 1992. Thanks, and uh, we'll rank albums by somebody else next week.